Hi guys and welcome back to Wade's Workshop. So the milling machine, uh, I think the first thing we need to do now that we've got it all assembled and we've run the motor in and all the rest of it is tram the head up. So um, I suppose let's get on with it. So um, I think what I'm going to do next is to tram the head um, this way just to make sure that it's at 90 degrees. Um, as you saw, I put the head on, I lined it up by eye, what looks, you know, upright, and just tightened the bolts up. I haven't dogged them down yet, um, although they are fairly tight. I will have to loosen them to adjust it. So as it happens, um, I've got this little setup here, which is out of my um, scribing block that I restored some time ago. So if you haven't seen that, um, yeah, check that video out, guys. It was all made on my lathe, um, hand fitting, that sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, as it turns out, I put my collet chuck, my MT3 collet chuck, up in the headstock, or in the head. <laughs> um, this one has an M12 um, tapped hole in the back, so I swapped what came with it, which was the M10 drawbar, swapped to the M12. They do give you both drawbars, an M10 and M12. Most MT3 tooling is M12, um, but yeah, it's handy to have the M10. It gives me options going forward. Right. I need to tighten up the collet chuck. Um, this spanner came with the machine. It looks like it's been plasma cut. Um, it's definitely a flame cut edge on there. I can see a start stop point there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, and it is a flame cut finish. So it, yeah, it's been plasma cut. Absolutely no attempt um, to deburr it. It's, you know, all these outer edges are sharp. So I think a little bit of hand fitting is going to be done on that. Um, and whether I can show, yeah, there's this sort of absolutely no radius on the handles. Um, yeah, you know the the spanner I've got. All right, this is this has got broken edges and what have you. The one that came with my ER32 collet and uh, a nice rubberized handle. It would have been nice if that was of similar design. But uh, yeah, I'm sure I can do something with it. I'll probably will give it a um, you know a dressing up and sort that out. But that's that's another story. So, um, yeah, I'll just hold the spindle there. The spanner does fit. And just tighten up my... Where are we? <laughs> no need to go mad on this. Right, okay. So that is now tight in there. I've got a little uh, finger dial gauge I've had for donkey's years. And we'll fit that up on the little dovetail on the back. Donkey's ears, or donkey's ears, I don't know. <laughs> Where does that um, expression come from? I think it's donkey's years, uh, as in donkeys live a long time. So I've had it for a long time. It's a weird expression. It's a funny old language. Hang on. Just... Uh, Fit that. There we go. Something like that. Tighten that up. Right, can I get the swing without hitting the head? Ooh, just. I suppose that'll give me a long enough swing. Yeah, I mean, that'll be measuring over a wide area there. Okay, so my plan is, um, normally if you were clocking up, you'd have something, a lot of people will use an, a, a brake disc. Uh, you can buy a car brake disc fairly cheaply, which is pretty flat and circular. And you can scroll around a brake disc, which is quite a good idea. Um, you can clamp it down in the center with a bolt and you can you know, basically clock up the, the brake disc for chewing up. I haven't got one. Um, it may be something I'll keep my eye, eye open for. Um, it would have to be a new one, obviously. Um, yeah, maybe it'll be a trip to my local motor factors or a look on eBay for a, a disc, a brake disc of an appropriate size that I can use just for this job. But I'm sure I can uh, manage without. So, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to bring the head down to near touch. Is that below surface? Yes, that's fine. I'm going to touch on one side, set a zero. In fact, why don't I just do it? Right, okay, so... Let me just bring the head down to somewhere near. There we are. We're just a couple of millimetres off. Um, I'll lock the column. 
Right, if I tighten up the screw here, I can now wind the clock down. Where are we? Let's have a look. Let's go for a 0.1 touch off. Um, it probably end up being further out than that, but we'll see. So if I turn on the little um, digital scale here, the little uh, readout, so if I wind down and get my clock just to come up to zero, let's see if I can get in on that clock a bit more. Hold on guys, won't be a minute. Oh well, we'll be able to see this. Will it focus? I think you can see enough there. Right, okay. Um, we won't be able to see the other side when I come round here, but that's, that's another story. Right, so what I'm going to do is come round, and you'll see my zero mark is just here. I'm just going to touch off on the bed, and winding down on the quill. It'll touch in a minute, I'm sure. Oh, what's going on there? Is that all solid? No, I got a bit of rock there, right, okay. That's solid, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, 90 degrees this way to the spindle. Wind down. Uh, just reset that gauge, okay. Wind down and bring it up to a zero point. Here we go. There. I'm going to set the little scale here on the on the head to zero, and I'm going to wind back off. There, that's not touching. Then I'm going to spin the head right round to the other direction. I'll bring you back out of uh, zoom a minute. Back out would be the other way, eh? Right, okay. <laughs> so I'm now over in this direction. The clock's still not touching, and I'm going to wind down on the hand wheel here again till I get zero on the little readout. Point six to go. Oh, ooh, this is going to be awfully close. Well, I wouldn't have believed that. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> right, let me bring you around the other side. I might just go freehand on the camera. I'm just going to pull the camera out of the... Uh... Oh, try not to shake about too much. I've got zero, or point zero two, two hundredths of a mil. And my DTI around this side is uh, on the zero. So I'll try and show this in real time now. I'm going to go in freehand on the camera. Right, okay. If I set this back to zero, right, I wind back off. Back off, aid. <laughs> I'm just getting used to these controls. Which way it goes? So now my clock is free of the surface again. So I'll come wind the clock round so that the clock is not being touched on anything on the way round, not catching in the grooves, anything like that. Right, okay. So let's wind back down. Here we go, we're almost there. Clock on zero. Point zero three. Now, <laughs> I've set that up by eye um, to 90 degrees, and, you know, that is so close. Um, I think what I'm going to do, just to try and show, let me put the camera back on the tripod, because I'm sure you don't like all this shaking around. I'm trying to have as steady a hand as possible, but uh, there we go. Right, OK. <laughs> um, it's very difficult to demonstrate how to clock a head up if it doesn't need clocking up. So... Much as I hate to do it, I'm going to undo the bolts that hold it, uh, that lock it, and I'm going to deliberately throw it out, you know, a half a degree or so. Because, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't credit it that it's actually almost spot on upright. Right, so, having said that, I'm just going to wind the, uh, wind everything away so that we undo the lock. <laughs> so that, that clock's safe. Right, bear with me guys, I'm going to undo the three bolts, I'm going to deliberately set it out about one degree, and come back and we'll do this clocking procedure again. 
Okay, so I've slackened off the bolts just a bit and I've given the head a tap to put it deliberately out of stra uh, straightness. Right, okay. Um, so yeah, same procedure. Clocks this end. Bring the head down. Or the quill down. And I've got zero on my clock. I'll zero the digital scale on the quill. Just wind off the surface. Spin round the other way. Wind the readout back to zero. There. And I'm actually not touching on the clock. It's, it's reading greater than 0.1. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Okay, that means that I'm further out than the amount of load I'm putting on the clock. So let me just wind the clock back and we'll put a little bit more load on it for the zero. So back down. Okay. And zero on the indicator. Oh, and I'm bumping it. Zero on the indicator. Zero on the digital readout. Wind off. Come round the other way. Bring the digital readout back to zero. And yeah, I'm measuring about 0.13 low this side um, so this side needs to come down this side needs to come up so I need to hit the head that way a little uh, probably 0 0.06 millimeters um, to split the difference so if I come back around this side I can bring you in on the clock so I'll just go to zero here. Right. So I need to tap the bottom of the head on this side, on the left hand side, and the clock will increase, or decrease I should say, by 0 0.06. So let me bring you in on the clock again. So excuse me moving the, the camera, trying to get you a shot here guys. Uh, okay. I think you can see that. So I've set it on a zero. In fact, I could set it. 0 0.06. Okay, so it's not 0 0.1 of a mil. It's about 0 0.06. It's about uh, two, three thou, maybe. So, my bolts are loose. I'll just find a little spot. Can I get my mallet in there? Just gentle couple of taps. Actually went the other way. Yes, it would. I should have gone 0 0.06 to zero. So I've got a 12. Yeah, it's gone the other way to what I was thinking. And I throw my spanner on the floor. Okay, so let's get a zero reading here. Bring the clock to zero. There. That's set my. I'll bring you off, cat off this tripod again, guys. So. Oh, difficult to do this without shaking all about. So, zero this side. And I've set a zero there. I'll just wind off. So the nib is not touching. Where are we? There, it's not touching. Rotate round 180. And bring this back to zero. Okay, where's my clock? Ooh. Two hundredths. Okay, I think that is about as good as I'm going to get. Uh, I may do a few more taps um, to try and get it perfect. I'll do that off camera and then I'll show you again what my end results are. Okay, so having trammed it left and right, I'm just going to check the front and the rear. I better readjust the clock a little bit. Um, so yeah, exactly the same method. I've got the clock here and I've got it set on zero and a zero on my DRO. I'll just bring the tip away, run it around 180 degrees and Uh, 
Okay, that's on zero. And I'm showing point zero 0.02. I'm just going to double check this and do it again. Because I appear to have absolutely no variance, which would shock me. Um, let me just do it again. Zero. Zero my clock on the front. Wind off. Back round the other side. Wind this back to zero. Right, got a zero there. I'm showing point zero three of variance. So I've got a zero on my clock. Wind it off. Bring it round. Let me get you in a position where you can see the clock. Two seconds of movement. Oh, you can't see it there. Right, okay, that's better. So I'm going to wind down again. Here we go, we're touching the clock. Yeah, that's zero. Yeah. Um, try and do this steadily. Point zero 0.03. Now I've got point zero 0.03 of out of tilt over the whole width of the bed, which is about the yeah, sour and a bit, you know in a couple of tenths um, I don't think that's drastic and to adjust that I'll probably let me just bring you out a shot a minute let me just uh, get somewhere where we can talk about this issue okay to adjust it um, the head this way hmm Obviously, I couldn't do it. Be well, you could shim it behind the column, but why would you do that? Um, I don't want to do that. You would have to adjust by the gapping at the bottom here. All four of those bolts are tight. And I'm finding... Let me just put myself in it. Put this to zero. Let me see just which way I am leaning. Okay, this side is higher than that side so it suggests that the column wants to lean back um, now to do that you would need to shim under the front of the column uh, and that would then lean it back or you would need to scrape the back of the pad that the column sits on 4.03 am I worried probably not uh, what I could try and do, which is a possibility, hang on, I can't see the camera. What I could try and do is to get the Allen key in the back here on the rear bolts and just <laughs> have a crack at them and see if I can get a little bit more on them. Um, I can't see if it's going to alter it any, but I could just try tightening up on those rear bolts if I can. They are tight already. Um, let me just see if I can get anything. Oh, well, I can. And it's, ooh, it's dropped that reading down to 0 0.02. Let me see if I can get anything on the back one. Cool, nothing. <laughs> I can't. Right, well. 0.02 two hundredths of a millimeter over the full width of the table I think we'll call that good yeah I think we'll call that good I'm not desperately worried about two hundredths of a millimeter um, it may come a time when it matters and I've got to play with it but I think that's sort of <laughs> as good as you can reasonably expect especially when you've got you know one two three and the quill four four different angular points where errors could be one two would be the slide 
three would be the face, four would be the spindle. Yeah, there are four variations as to where it could be. And then that's without taking into the uh, allowance for the table and what have you. So two hundreds, we're going to live with that. And I know I've waffled on a bit, but I've shown basically it's an inspection. I've got the head vertically this way, within, you know, half a hundredth. And it's within two hundredths over the full width of the table that way. So happy days. Well, there we are, guys, all trammed up. Um, yeah, I know I took a bit of time showing exactly how I went about it, but some people want to know. A lot of people already know, but some people want to know. So I, at least I've shown it for the people who want to know how I, at least how I've gone about it with what I've got. Right, OK, that's done. Next video, I suppose, is going to be first cuts. I need to get a, a vice mounted and do some first cuts. So that will be along very soon. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we will see you all very soon. Bye now.